Hi guys, and welcome to part two of the ratio style questions. Um, these these questions they're going to focus on the uh, the higher topics. So um, let's go straight into it. Oh, I have to share my screen. Let's do that. So let's do uh, the next section, which is using two or more ratios in the same question. Um, first example. So obviously, obviously we're on example seven. If you've, if you've not seen the first part, then obviously watch that first to do with the foundation stuff. But we're on example seven, technically the first one to do with the higher topics. Uh, the ratio of dogs to cats is five to three. Ratio of fish to dogs is six to one. Find the ratio of cats to fish. Give your answer in its simplest form. Bit of a weird one. So these these questions, you've got two different ratios in the same question. Let's write down what they're talking about. So you've got five to three dogs to cats. Okay. And you've got fish to dogs. Fish to dogs uh six to one. There's our two ratios. Okay. Um they're asking us, what is the ratio of cats to fish? Um, so anything like this, you know, what I would do, I would write it as a ratio of three different things. So obviously you've got dogs, cats, and fish. We have got three different things in this, in this ratio. Let's write our ratio as, uh, how should we do this? Mm, let's write it as dogs. Uh, no, in fact, let's do fish on this side. Fish to dogs to cats. Makes no difference, to be honest. Which order are you doing? I'm just going to do it in this order. Yeah, so I've got fish to dogs to cats. You'll notice, um, no, in fact, let's put the ratios down in first. So I'm going to put these ratios in. So uh, dogs to cats. They say they said it was five to three. Yeah, that was our first ratio. And then underneath, I'm going to write the second ratio: fish to dogs. Well, fish to dogs is over here, six to one underneath. You'll notice that they both have dogs in the uh, ratio. Yeah, so dogs is the common theme here for both of them. That's got five. That's got one. So we need the same ratio. So you have to think of uh, think of it as a common common factor. What's the common lowest common factor for for five and one? Well, we could make that equal to five by timesing by timesing this row, this row with the six to one times everything by five in that row. Yeah, and that's going to give us five here and six times five gives you 30 okay and we've not touched the cats the cat stays the same because obviously remember when that dogs was five the cats was three anyways the dogs is five here that's got to be three so you've not touched the cats at all um so that stays the same as three the only one affected is the fish that's now 30 yep so your new ratio fish to dogs to cats is 30 to 5 to 3. Yeah, but we don't want fish to dogs to cats. We want cats to fish. So cats is now 3. Fish is 30. Yeah. And also, obviously don't forget you need it in its simplest form so we can simplify this. What goes into these? Let's simplify it. Divide that by 3. Three goes into that as well. So three goes into that once, three goes into that ten times. There's your answer. One to ten. And you're done. Yep. So it's a really good way of doing it. You know, um, write your ratios separately by all means, but you're gonna have to combine them at some point and get a common ratio for all three. Yeah, it's a really good way of doing it. Have a go of the next questions yourself. Give it a go. Uh, so pause the video. And when you're ready, just uh, unpause it. Okay, so practice question 7A. Alfie, Bertie, and Charlie share 46 pound. 
the amount Alfie and Bertie get is in the ratio of nine to five. The amount Bertie and Charlie get is in the ratio of two to one. How much does Alfie get? Okay, let's write down. Um, let's do Alfie and Bertie nine to five. Okay, and um, Bertie Charlie get two to one. We're gonna have to combine these. Let's put Alfie Bertie. Charlie as as one big ratio. So Alfie to Bertie was nine to five. Bertie to Charlie was two to one underneath. Yep. Both ratios have got Bertie. Yeah, that's the common ratio here. Um let's multiply this one by two. And this one by five, yeah, because obviously we want ten as our factor, um, common factor that, that five and two both go into. You could use, you could have used something else, a much bigger number. You could have used twenty, you could use forty. It makes no difference, but obviously, whatever you do to one ratio, you're gonna have to do it for all of them. So this whole row is gonna get multiplied by two. So Alfie was originally nine parts uh so you're gonna have to times that by two you get you'll get 18 parts over here and for charlie you're gonna have to times that by five it'll be on five parts yep so that's our new ratio 18 to 10 to 5. how much does alfie get well alfie got 18 parts um oh wait a minute we're gonna have to use this because obviously they share all three of them share 46 pounds so that's the total amount we're going to have to add the ratio 18 plus 10 plus 5 which is 33 parts is that right yeah and 33 parts equals total amount which is 46 pounds so one part will be 46 divided by 33 it's obviously going to be a Decimal, 46 divided by 33. Oh, it's a recurring decimal. Let's do it as a fraction. It's more accurate. Um, 46 over 33. Let's leave it like that. You can write it as a decimal if you want, but I won't recommend it. Let's leave it like that. And there's your crucial bit, finding out what one part is. And now... Alfie, how much? He had 18 parts. So Alfie, it's 18 times that fraction. Let's times that by 18. Okay. Um, 25 pounds. Let's round it. No, in fact, to the nearest penny, penny it's going to be 25 pounds and nine pence anyway. Yep. And there's your final answer. <clears throat> yep. Uh, that's that one done. Question 7B. On a farm, the number of cows and sheep are in the ratio of six to five. Okay, let's write that down. So six to five, that's cows to sheep. Number of sheep to pigs is two to one. Okay, so we want um, total number of cows, sheep, and pigs on the farm is 189. How many sheep are there on the farm? Okay, so, yep, we're going to have to combine this again. Let's do cows to sheep to pigs. So cows to sheep, six to five. Sheep to pigs is two to one. Similar sort of thing from the other one, isn't it? You'll have to times this by two, times this row by five. You'll get 12. You'll get 10. And that'll be five. Yep, when you multiply that row by five. Uh, there's your new ratio, 12 to 10 to five. Total number of cows, sheep, and pigs is this. So there's your total number for everything. So you have to add the ratio. 
together. That's going to give you 27 parts. Those 27 parts equals 189 animals. So one part will be 189 divided by 27. 189 divided by 27. Exactly seven animals. There's a crucial bit, finding out what one part is. And now what's he asking for? How many sheep are there on the farm? Well, the sheep was 10 parts. So sheep, 10 times seven, which is 70 sheep. Yep, don't just leave it at 70, do write what it is. It's obviously 70 sheep. Yep. Hopefully you can see a pattern emerging here. It's the same thing over and over again, isn't it? Uh, let's have a look at the next one. Let me scroll down. Um, given that A to B is 4 to 5, B to C is 3 to 2, find the ratio of A to B to C. Okay, keep the answer in its simplest form. All right. Let's write down. Um, let's just go straight into it. A to B to C. Well, A to B is 4 to 5. B to C is 3 to 2. So that they've got B in common. Um, I want 15 to be here. So I'm going to have to times that by 3. Times this row by 5. Um, so I'm going to have to times this 4 by 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Times that by five, that's going to give you 10. Um, simplify it. Yep, so I'm going to have to simplify that. Uh, what goes into all of these? Nothing. Apart from one. Can't do five. Can't do two because it's got 15. That is your final answer. So your final answer is 12 to 15 to 10 yeah you can't do anything to that okay question 7d there are only red black and yellow pens in a box there are three times as many red pens as black pens five times as many yellow pens as red pens toby takes that random a pen from the box work out the probability that Toby takes a black pen. So probability, don't be put off by that. Probability is just a fraction at the end of the day. You know, it's how many black pens they're going to be out of the total. That's all it is. So we'll deal with that later on. Don't worry about that. Um, there are only red, black, and yellow pens. Okay, so there are three times as many red pens as black pens. So what's the ratio for that going to be? So red to black pens. Three times as many as black pens. So if there's only one for the black pens, there's going to be three times as many for the red. So it's going to be three to one. Yep. And same th sort of thing for the other one. So there are yellow pens and red pens. Five times, five times as many yellow as red. There's your two ratios. Um... Which order should we do this in? Let's do it. Yellow, red, black. Again, you can do this in any order. Makes no difference. Red to black is three to one. Yellow to red is five to one. There's your two common ones. They've both got red in both ratios. Um, I want a three here, so I'm going to have to times this by three. Yep. So um, that's going to be 15 here. That's still a one. You've not changed that at all. So your new ratio is 15, 3 to 1. Um, so he's going to take a random pen from the box. So the box contains all three, yellow, red, and black pens. So what's the total number of pens? Um, well, the total number of parts, sorry, uh, is going to be 15 plus 3 plus 1, which is 19. Yeah. Um, Technically, yeah, that is going to be number of pens because they're all the same now. So let's say there's 19 pens uh, in total. 
uh, is going to take a black pen. So black represents just one. So black. Oh, the probability of getting black is one out of 19. There's your answer. Just leave it like that. Yeah, it's going to be a fraction, definitely. Just leave it like that. That's that one done. Okay, let's move on to the next section. So section eight, using difference of two ratios. Um, the ages of Ben, Graham, and Pam are in the ratio three to seven to eight. Pam is 25 years older than Ben. How old is Graham? Wow, so that's the only information we're told. We're not told anything else. So using that information, how would you figure that out? Well, it's the difference between Pam and Ben. Yeah. The difference in the ages is 25 years. Okay. Between Pam and Ben. So what's the difference between their ratios? Well, let's, let's write their ratio down. Three, to seven, to eight. So three is, is Ben. Seven represents Graham. And eight is Pam. Yeah. So it's the difference between Pam, Pam and Ben. So these two ratios on the end. So if the difference in the ages is 25 years, what's the difference in their ratios? Well, that's Pam's got eight. Ben's got three. The difference between them is five parts or five shares. So those five parts must be equal to the difference in the ages those five parts equals the 25 years between them yeah, or the difference between them sorry so the five parts though that difference between their ages must equal the difference in their ages so five parts must equal 25 years one part is going to be 25 divided by five which is five years there's your crucial bit finding out what one part represents now it's dead easy. Yeah, once you've done that, that's the hard part done. Uh, how old is Graham? Well, Graham had seven parts. So if Graham is seven times what one part is, seven times five, 35 years. There's your answer. So it's not as bad as you think. Yeah, I know we had very little to go on, but you just have to use the information that they're told, that you're told, and... Um, you know, I always write the ratio down and go from there. So have a go of the next questions yourself. Pause the videos. And uh, once you're ready, just, just unpause it. So let's have a look at practice question 8A. Pat and Julie share some money in the ratio 2 to 5. Julie gets £45 more than Pat. How much money did Pat get? Right, so the ratio 2 to 5. Uh, so 2... Is for Pat. Five is Julie. So is the difference between Pat and Julie similar sort of thing to the example that we just did? So the difference in their ratios is three parts. Yep, those three parts equals difference in the the amount of money they get. In this case, forty five pounds. Um. So one part. 45 divided by 3, which is 15 pounds. There's a crucial bit. Finding out what one part represents. Uh, how much money did Pat get? Well, Pat had two parts. So it's 2 times 15, which is 30 pound. Yep, there's your answer for Pat. Uh, practice question 8b, uh, at a school, number of boys to number of girls is 9 to 7. There are 116 more boys than girls. Work out the total number of students at school. Okay, let's write down ratio. That's number of boys. That's number of girls. Um, so there are 116 more boys. So in the question, when it says more or if it's got less or anything like that, when you see a difference between two things definitely it's the difference in their ratios as well so 
what's the difference between them two parts that must be equal to difference in the number of students so that's 116 let's call them students yeah so one part will be uh 116 divided by 2 which is is it 58 yep 58 students let's say yep there's your hard bit done um what's it asking for work out the total number of students oh uh total number of students will be well it's it's that isn't it it's nine plus seven which is total number of parts 16 parts in total um so it'll be 16 times 58. you could have done it differently let's just do it like this quick and easy 928 students and there's your answer yeah uh yeah or you could have worked them out individually and just add them together makes no difference yeah so you don't necessarily have to do it this way by the way or other ways as long as you've got 928 as your answer that's the main thing um Practice question 8C, a baguette is cut into three pieces in the ratio one to two to five. Okay, first piece is 28 centimeters smaller than the third piece. How long is the second piece? All right, so we've got first, first piece, second piece, third piece. Yep, let's just call it that. First, second, and third. Yep. First piece is 28 centimeters smaller than the third. So it's the difference between the first and the third piece. So it's five minus one, which is four parts. Those four parts equals the difference, which is 28 centimeters. So one part will be 28 divided by four seven centimeters there's your crucial bit um what's it asking for how long is the second piece well the second piece had two parts so it's two times seven which is 14 centimeters there's your answer dead easy yep yeah, so it's not as bad as you think <clears throat> Um, obviously, it won't say in the question, it won't say in the exam either, you know, you're going to have to take these away. You're going to have to figure that out yourself. If you can just look for these clues in the question, then, you know, obviously that's the best thing. Let's move on to the last section. This is the most difficult aspect of ratios that I found anyway, um, when you've got equations in ratios. But try to think of it as, you know, this, it's got the same logic as, you know, if you've got one to two, equal to two to four yeah they, they both mean the same thing isn't it it's equivalent ratios yeah when you it's the opposite of simplifying isn't it so when you double one and double two you get two to four yeah it's the same thing it's the same as you know what how you simplify ratios or or you've got equivalent ratio uh not ratios fractions when you simplify fractions or you uh, have equivalent fractions it's exactly the same thing you can rewrite ratios as fractions like these yeah so um let's use that same logic to solve all these these questions and i think it makes more sense when you do it like this otherwise you can you know you're going to get it wrong you're going to start guessing and things like that which is not ideal um so let's have a look at this example so example nine if 5p equals 3q find the ratio P to Q. So straight away, you know, people would look at this and think, oh, my answer is going to be five to three. Completely wrong. Yes, don't fall into that trap that if it's five P equal to three Q, it's not going to be the same ratio. It's not going to be five to three necessarily. Yeah. In fact, it's not going to be that at all. Um, let's use the same logic um, to work this out. So 
when we rewrite it as fractions, um, what have we got? So we got 5p. In fact, <clears throat> let me do a bit of rearranging first. So you know this uh, equation that we've got, 5p equal to 3q. Yeah, you can rearrange this. Ideally, you want p and q to look like this. Yeah, you want it to look like a, a, a fraction like this, because then you'll get um, a ratio p to q. Rub that off. Yeah, this is what we're after. We want We want the fraction to look like that. Yeah. So you want p over q as your as your fraction. Yeah. So then you'll get your ratio p to q, which is what it's, it's asking for. So you want q to be on this side. So to bring q to that side, you're gonna have to divide by q. So it brings it down here. Yeah. And you want to get rid of the five. You want to bring it down here. Yeah. So it's called cross multiplication. That's what it's normally called. But it's basically rearranging that. You'll get p over q on that side and you'll get 3 over 5 as your fraction on that side yeah so when you've rearranged that um so now our ratio is going to be 3 oh, let me rewrite that And now it's going to be 3 to 5. Yep, so that P re uh, corresponds to that. That Q corresponds to that. So now your ratio, P to Q, is going to be 3 to 5. So remember before we said, oh, it's going to be 5 to 3. No, it's actually the other way around. Yep, so just be careful. It's not going to be 5 to 3. It's going to be 3 to 5 as your answer. So, uh, yeah, just, just be careful with these type of questions. And the logic behind it is sound. You know, this does definitely work. Same logic as this right here. Yeah, so you can test it, see, see for yourself. You will actually get the same answer. It should be three to five. Have a go of the next questions yourself. Um, pause the video. And once you're done or if you get stuck, you know, you can you can just unpause it. Okay, so let's have a go of this. Practice question 9a. 2a is five times bigger than b. Circle the ratio a to b. Uh, let's write that as an equation. So you've got 2a is equal to five times b. So that's going to be 5b. Yeah, there's our equation. Uh, we want it in the ratio A to B, so again, you want it to look like this for your for your uh, ratio to look like this. Uh, so we want it to be a, um, a fraction. So we want A over B, so you need to bring that down here. And uh, you need to move that 2 down there. So you'll get A over B equal to five over two just be careful yeah it should be five over two not the other way around so our ratio will be five to two which is that one so you have to circle that one definitely yep <clears throat> let's move on oh let me zoom out a little bit all right Practice question 9b. Uh, x to y is 7 to 4. x plus y equals 88. Work out the value of x minus y. Okay. Um, how are we going to do this? Let's get x on its own, and we need y on its own, and then we can work this out. So using this... seven. Four. 
Um, I call it x minus y. Okay. Uh, using this, so obviously, uh, let's write it as a fraction. Oh, what is that? I don't want to write that. Uh, let's write it as a fraction x over y is equal to 7 over 4. Yeah. Um, let's get x on its own. You'll have to multiply by y. That goes all the way up there. So x equals 7 over 4 y okay um similarly what we could do is oh let's use that let's use that so if x is equal to that we're told that this x plus y is equal to 88 so now i can replace the x with this so i'll have y in both of them so if x plus y equals 88, I can replace the x with this. 7 over 4y plus y equals 88. Um, that's going to be... Obviously, that's just 1y. Let's, use a, let's, let's rewrite that as a fraction. So 7 over 4y plus 4 over 4y. Adding fractions, you get 7 add 4, 11 over 4y equals 88. Um, you're going to have to bring that to the other side. So that whole thing, you're going to have to bring it to the other side by dividing 88 divided by 11 over 4 it looks a bit weird but it's gonna have to be like this so y is uh 88 divided by let's do it as a fraction 11 over 4 32 so y is 32 okay oh so now if y is 32 let's put it back into let's call this equation one <clears throat> Let's put it into let's put it back into the equation one. So now x plus thirty-two equals eighty-eight. Uh let's minus thirty-two to both sides. X equals eighty-eight do uh, eighty-eight take away thirty-two, which is fifty-six. So now we've worked out both x and y. Now we can take them away. It's a bit of a weird way of doing it, but probably um I'm sure there is uh, other ways of doing this, but let's just do it this way. Uh, so now x minus y is going to be 56 take away 32, which is 56 take away 32, 24. There's your answer. Yeah, bit of a weird one. But yeah, just work out step by step. You're probably best off working out what X is, what Y is separately, and then you can take them away uh, for the final bit. Yeah, so that's that one. Um, practice question 9C. Y is one and a half times X circle of ratio that is equivalent to y to x okay so y equals one and a half x that's what we're told isn't it yeah i don't like that one and a half so make that into a whole number you can have to double it so you have to double this side as well so you'll get two y equals three x um we want the ratio y to x so uh let's bring the x down here that two down here so you'll get y over x equals three over two yep so your ratio is going to be three to two this one right here 
Yep, there's your answer. What's that one done? It's only one mark. 9D. A to B is 4 to 3, circle the correct statement. So we've got B is a is four sevenths of a b is three sevenths of a b is that b is that so we want, we want b on its own obviously that's that's obvious yeah so if you get b equal to something that's what we're after definitely for for this question uh how do we get b on its own let's rewrite this as a um fraction so that's going to be a over b equal to four over three yeah they both mean the same thing how do we get b on its own um let's bring that over there i have to multiply by b that goes up there and bring that up here for now so we'll get 3a equals 4b and now to get b on its own let's bring the 4 down here so b equals 3 a over four or if you think of it three quarters of a that's what that means literally yeah that means three quarters of a which is that one b is three quarters of a that's the same as that that's what that means yeah that wasn't too bad next one practice question 9e b is two-thirds of c 5a equals 4c. Work out the ratio of a to b to c. Okay. Give your answer in its simplest form. All right. Let's write this as a as a, as a as an equation. So b equals two thirds c. That's literally what it means. Yep. Um work out the ratio of a to b to c. All right. So we got what b is. Uh, we need b and C together. So um, let's rearrange this. So bring this up here. You'll get that. We'll get um, 3B equals 2C. Yep. <clears throat> And now you can rearrange it even more. Bring that down here, bring that down here. So you'll get B over C equals two over three. So B to C will be two to three. There's B to C, right? That's one of our ratios. Let's use this one for our other ratio um i need a and c on its own so let's bring that down there that five can go down there so we'll get a over c equals four over five yep there we are so a to c will be four to five that's my other ratio so a to b to c a to B to C. Um, well, B to C is 2 to 3. A to C is 4 to 5. That's going to be there. What have they got in common? Well, um, they've both got C. I'm going to have to change them both to 15. So I'm going to times this by 3, times that by 5. So this row, if you times it by 5, you're going to have to times that B by 5. That's going to be a 10 there. Times that row by 3, that's going to be a 12. Simplify. Um, nothing goes into those. I think we're done. Yeah, so it's 12. Oh, where's my pen gone? What's up to my pen? Come on. There we go. <laughs> uh, 12 to 10 to 5. Yeah, you can't simplify anymore, unfortunately. 
Um, practice question 9F. Uh, so we've got X kilometers per hour equals to Y miles per hour. Use eight kilometers per hour equal to five miles per hour to write a formula for Y in terms of X. So this is a bit of a weird question. You know, it doesn't seem like it's got anything to do with the ratio, but technically it has. You know, you can use ratio to work this out. Um, so we've got eight kilometers. Well, that's eight. What's up into this? Eight X. There you go. Uh, equal to five Y. Yep. And again, don't be tempted to put eight to five as your answer. Or uh, in fact, we can't. <laughs> we have to do it as an equation. We have to write our formula y in terms of x. So you'll have to put y equal to something x. That's what we're we're after. Um, let's bring uh, yeah. In fact, um, write a formula y in terms of x. Yep. Let's bring that down there. You'll get y equals eight x over five. That's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah, eight fifths of x. Yeah, that's all it is. Two marks just for doing that. That's weird. Okay. That's that one done. Um, let's move on. 9G, uh, ratio Y plus X to Y minus X is the equivalent of K to 2. Show that Y equals X K over 2 over K minus 2. So we're going to have to show this at some point. Um, so obviously, I'm going to need to write it as a fraction. Rewrite the ratio as a fraction and then just try and rearrange it. So uh, you've got our first bit of ratio y plus x over y minus x and that's the same as k over 2 yep so that's the same as the uh, the ratio that they've told us um let's rearrange this so let's bring this up here let's bring this up here so we'll get 2y plus x yeah, equals ky minus x. <clears throat> OK, we're getting somewhere. Let's, let's expand these. Get rid of the brackets. Let's call that kx. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna need y on its own. So I've got a y here in this term. I've got a y all, all the way over here on this side. So let's bring them all to one side. Um, yeah, you'll get minus ky on that side. And let's bring the two uh, x to the other side. So you're gonna get. Minus 2x minus kx. Oops, let me just fix that. Yeah. Um, obviously, we want y on its own. So factorize this bit to take out y. You want a factor of y on its own. What you left with when you factorize this, you'll get 2 minus k in brackets equals, should we factorize that bit as well? Yeah, let's factorize that. Uh, what should we take out? In fact, I'm gonna rewrite that, rewrite the other way. Uh, you'll see why in a minute. So I'm gonna write that as minus kx minus 2x.
let's take a factor of x out of that. You'll get k, or minus k, sorry, minus k minus 2 over... Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. We're almost there. We've almost got our answer. We're almost there. Can you see we're getting closer to the answer. We're, getting, we're, all, we, we're trying to show this. So we have to bring this whole thing in the brackets to underneath here when you're doing the opposite of times because obviously it's multiplying by the y. So the opposite of that is divide. You'll get y on its own equals all of that at the top over... In fact, I'm going to rewrite it as minus k plus 2. Yeah, and you'll, again, you'll see why I'm going to rewrite like that. Because I want, I want it to look like this a little bit. Yeah, so I'll put it in the right order. But look at the signs. The signs are different. The signs are different here as well. There's a minus and a minus in there. They should be, they should be both positive. That's a minus. That's a positive. They should the other way around that should be a positive the k should be positive and the two should be negative at the bottom so you can have to times this one by minus one and you're gonna have to times that by minus one as well yeah and when you times this by minus one you can just multiply everything in that brackets by minus one it's not going to affect the x on the outside it's just the brackets so you'll get x brackets k plus 2. Yeah, because the signs are going to be changed over. Now that's going to be positive k, and that's going to be negative 2. Yep, so if you do, definitely um, multiply minus 1 to both top and bottom. You're going to have to do that. Yeah, in fact, let me highlight that bit, this and this. You can have to do that. That's the most important part. Um, and you're just doing it to the brackets, not the thing on the outside. You're just doing it to the brackets, and it works. Yeah, you're allowed to do that. Um, and there you've shown it. That's your that's your answer. Yeah. Show that y equals all of that. Yeah, and you've shown it. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, so we got there in the end. It took a bit of a while, but you get there in the end. Practice question 9H. Oh, looks complicated. Uh, given that x squared to 5x plus 7 is equal to 1 to 2, find the possible values of x. Okay, well, again, let's write it as fractions. x squared over 5x plus 7. You don't have to put it in brackets, but you can if you want. It is the same as that over that. Yep, that's the same as that. Uh, find possible values of x. Again, you know, let's get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to have to bring that up there. That's going to go up there. So you'll get 2x squared equals 5x plus 7. Let's bring everything to one side. Okay. So we're going to get a quadratic expression, definitely, equal to zero. Yep. Let me rewrite that up here. Okay, so uh, let's use the uh, AC method. So obviously 2 times minus 7 gives you minus 14. Yep, minus 14. So two numbers that multiply to give you minus 14 and give you minus 5 at the same time is going to be... Uh, 2 and 7, which way around though? Uh, so it's going to be minus 7 
plus two, isn't it? Yeah, that's going to give me minus five as well. Yeah, so you split this into, it makes no difference which way around you do. I'm just going to put two X here and minus seven X here. Yeah, again, it's going to, it's not going to make any difference. Bring this down. You've got two X squared. Bring that down. You've got minus seven equal to zero. Factorize this bit. You'll get. Bring out 2x, what you're left with. You've got x plus 1. Factorize this bit and take out minus 7. You'll get x plus 1. Yep, you'll notice the brackets is the same. That means you're doing it right. Um, so your first bracket will be the one outside the brackets. So the 2x minus 7, that's your first brackets. And your second brackets is going to be one of these. Yep. So if you don't know this method, I think it's a really good way of doing it. Um, if you get anything bigger than just x squared on its own, if there's a number in front of the x squared, have a look at the AC method. It's a really good way of doing it. Yeah, and um, it's a really good way of factorizing. If you're not sure, sometimes it's sometimes it's not clear. If it's with two, I could have figured it out myself, but um, I'll show. You, I'll just show you this method anyway. Um, so obviously, the, either this is going to equal to zero, or this or the brackets is equal to zero. So you're going to get two answers definitely. Um, so two x equals seven x is going to be seven over two there's your first answer or x equals minus one there's your second answer yep there's your two answers find possible values of x seven over two you can just leave that as a fraction or minus one yep that concludes the um main questions in the uh, in the notes the the handout that i did okay let's move on to the uh, extension questions uh so this is going to be a mix of questions obviously um wide range of topics obviously still to do with ratio so let's have a look right, extension question one so dylan eli and fabian share some sweets the amount of sweets dylan gets to the amount of sweets eli gets is in the ratio seven to three Okay, the amount of Dylan gets to the amount Fabian gets is in the ratio of four to five. Given Fabian gets 21 more sweets than Dylan, work out how many sweets Eli gets. So it's one of those, you've got two ratios. Uh, that's Dylan to Eli. And you've got four to five. That's Dylan to Fabian. All right, so let's um, combine them all as, um, let's do F, D, and E. Yep, again, makes no difference which order you do in. So F is five, D is four. Yep, so I've written this the other way around. Okay, and D to E, seven to three underneath yeah so obviously dylan is the most is the is the uh, common thing here um so let's change that to common factor 28 so i'm gonna have to times that by seven times this row by four so i'm gonna have to times five by seven that's 35 that's going to be 12. Okay. Uh, Fabian gets 21 more sweets than Dylan. All right. So that's the difference between Fabian and Dylan. So the difference in the ratios is 7 parts. 
Yeah, so those seven parts must equal 21 sweets. So you can probably see where this is going. So one part will be 21 divided by seven. Three sweets. That is a crucial bit. <clears throat> Finding out what one part is. And what's it asking for? Work out how many sweets Eli gets. What well, Eli? Yes, 12 parts, so Eli, 12 times 3, which is 36. There's the answer. Yep, let's move on to the next one. Shop sells packs of black pens packs of red pens and packs of green pens there are two pens in each pack of black pens five pens in each pack of red pens six pens in each pack of green pens on monday number of packs of black pens sold to number of packs of red pens sold number of packs to green pens sold is seven to three to four total of 212 pens were sold work out number of green pens sold this is one of those questions don't be get don't get sucked in um to think that you know oh i'm gonna have to add this ratio and then it's gonna be equal to this and then and then that's it it's not that straightforward remember you've got two things going on here you've got pens and you've got packs so we need the total number of pens yeah because that's what we're told we're told the total number of pens is this what's our ratio though what the ratio that we're given seven to three to four what does actually represent that's to do with number of packs yeah for all of them number of packs um so obviously that's black that's red and that's green but it's number of packs though yeah these represent number of packs so we want the number of pens uh well there's two pens in each pack of black pens so it's going to be two times seven um so i'm gonna to have to times this by two times this one by five and times this one by six it's a bit unusual but basically the number of pens, the ratio for the number of pens will be 14 to 15 to 24. That's your ratio that you need, not that one. Because this is the this is your ratio of number of pens now. Yeah. This was number of packs. Okay. This is number of pens. Okay, that's your number of pens. Um, now we can use this 212 pens. So we want the total number of, we need the total number of pens. So obviously number of, total number of parts will be 14 plus uh, 15 plus 24. Let's add those up. 14 plus 15 plus 24, 53 parts those 53 parts equals 212 pens yeah always write what your um what it represents don't just write 53 equals 212 doesn't make any sense so 53 parts equals 212 pens so what's one part going to be so it's going to be 212 divided by 53 212 divided by 53 yeah it's exactly four pens there's a crucial bit finding out what one part is so you should get one part equal to four pens so if you don't get that you've gone wrong somewhere um what's it asking for work out the number of green pens well green was 24 so green is 24 parts times four pens Turns out by 24, it's 96. 96 pens 
is your answer. 96 green pens. Yep, and there's your answer for that one. Let's move on. Extension question three. Uh, there are some chocolates in a box. Okay. Quarter of the chocolates contain nuts. The rest of the chocolates do not contain nuts. Write down the ratio. Let me just save it first. One second. Write down the ratio of the number of chocolates uh, that contain nuts to the number of chocolates that do not contain nuts. Give your answer in the form one to n. Okay. Right. So what have we got? Um, all right, okay. So if a quarter of the chocolates contain nuts, the rest, what's the rest going to be? The rest that do not contain nuts. That's going to be, well, one takeaway a quarter, which is three quarters. That must be the rest. Yep. Um, so write down, write down the ratio of number of chocolates that contain nuts to the number of chocolates that do not contain nuts. So um, what should we say for that? No nuts. It looks a bit weird, but yeah, that's a quarter that contain nuts. That's three quarters. You want it in the ratio one to something. How do you get from a quarter to one times by four? You're going to have to times that by four as well, which is three. There's your answer. Dead easy. Wasn't too bad. Yeah, there's a lot of information in there, but if you break it down, um, just slowly work it out bit by bit. You know, if you if it's if it, a quarter is nuts, then the rest. What's the, what's the rest going to be? Just work it out on the side it's got to be three quarters just go from there write your ratio down work it out uh extension question four here are two squares a and b okay length of the side of square a is 50 percent of the length of the side of square b express the area of the shaded region of square a as a percentage of the area of square b bit of a weird question a lot of people did get this wrong you know when it came up in the exams um so a lot of people i think put 25 percent of their answer which was not correct uh, i'll show you why um so there's a couple of ways you can do this you know what should we do length of the side of square a is 50 percent of the length of side. so you know there's, there's loads of ways of doing these what you can do is they're saying the length of side a so this length right here it's a square so it doesn't matter which length you use um it's 50 percent. so it's half the length of of that so it's technically two to one isn't it and that's if that's one that's two that's twice as twice as big for the length from there to there Yeah, the ratio is two to one or one to two. Um, express the area of the shaded region. Okay, well, if that's one, let's call that one. That's one. Um, what is area of area of a triangle? Well, the area of a triangle is half base times whoops that's not times <laughs> half base times height what's happened there that's weird it's um is that gone no how weird is that there you go right half base times height <clears throat> Um, so it's going to be half one times one, which is half of one. Let's call it a half. Okay. Um, and what's the area of the 
side uh, the uh, square b well that's going to be two times two which is four um so what is the percentage of express the area of shaded region well the shaded region is a half uh, let's call it 0.5 out of the uh, shaded region as a percentage of the area of the square the area of the square is four you want that as a percentage times by 100. let's take that on your calculator 0.5 divided by four times by 100. yeah you're going to get 12.5 percent that's your answer yeah there are other ways as well you know if you draw what they're talking about as well wait basically what they're saying is this little square fits in here yeah and you, there's your shaded region right there if you fill in the rest it's going to look like this actually that's a, that's a really bad drawing we need to leave that It's going to look like this. It's going to be one quarter of these, isn't it? And then there's your shaded bit there. Here's a shaded bit. How many is that? That's out of. That's out of eight, eight sections. So it's technically one eighth as a percentage. Still get 12.5%. Yep, you can work it out if you wish. That's definitely going to be twelve point five percent. So there's loads of ways to do that. You can use algebra as well. It makes no difference how you do this question. You're going to get twelve and a half percent as your answer. Yeah, if you don't get that, then you're wrong. Well, let's move on. Uh, extension question five. Ray buys a van for eight thousand five hundred pounds plus VAT at twenty percent. Ray pays uh, deposit. Uh, she then pays the rest of the cost in 12 equal payments. Find the ratio of the deposit Rhea pays to the total of 12 equal. Okay. And we're going to need the total at some point. Um, right. So if, oh, let's work out what it is. So Ray buys a van for 8,500 plus VAT. So that you need to know what VAT is. Obviously, that's obvious. So VAT is added on it even says that plus VAT you have to work out you can do it in one go 120% of 8,500 let's work that out 120% of 8,500 worked it out separately and add it on it's absolutely fine I'm just going to do it in one go so the total of the van total cost of the van is on uh, 10,000 ten thousand two hundred pounds okay so she's going to pay that off in um she's going to pay a deposit and then pay the rest 12 equal payments of this so what is that 12 times 531.25 let's wear that out 12 times 531.25 that is um those come to six thousand three hundred and seventy five okay so if we take these away that'll leave you with your deposit what she paid first so we'll have to do so for the deposit i'm gonna have to work it out this way i'm gonna have to take them away what does that give us one or two zero zero take away six three seven five gives you um three thousand eight hundred and twenty five so that's what she paid for the deposit okay which is what we need as part of our answer find the ratio of the deposit that's that Raya pays to the total of the 12 equal payments well the to total of the 12 equal payments was that so the ratio of the deposit to the payments is three eight two five two six three seven five um 
is this going to be on the non-calculated paper? I doubt it. You can just divide it by five if it is, but and just keep going. Let's use our calculator. So in your calculator, you can literally type in three eight two five divided by six three seven five and it'll simplify it for you. So it'll come up as a fraction. On mine it comes up as I don't know if you can see that three over five. Um so as a ratio that's gonna be three to five. There's your answer. Yeah. Definitely if it's on the calculated paper just just use a fraction as your um what I did was three eight two five divided by six three seven five. It's, it's, it's gonna it's gonna write your answer as a fraction anyway. It came up as three over five. So uh, your your ratio is gonna be three to five. Yeah. Um, so that's what I did. If it's non-calculated, it's very unlikely it's gonna be on non -calc. In fact, it can't be non-calculated because that's gonna take you ages to work out all that, isn't it? So definitely use your calculator for that one. Let's move on. Question six, uh, there are only red buttons, yellow buttons and orange buttons in a jar. Number of red buttons to the number of yellow buttons and the number of orange buttons are in the ratio seven to four to nine. So that's red, yellow to orange. Let me just save this one second. It's taking ages to save with all these drawings on. Work out what percentage of the buttons are uh, in, the, in the jar are orange. Okay. Um, so, well, percentage of the total amount. Well, the total amount is um, total of the uh, total of total number of parts. So you got seven plus four plus nine. Um, that's going to be too lazy to work it out. Seven plus four plus nine. Twenty parts in total. Okay. So uh, what was the orange? Nine. There you go. So it's nine out of 20. Oh, we want it as a percentage. Don't forget. You want it as a percentage. So you have to times by 100. Nine divided by 20 times by 100. 45%. Here's your answer. Dead easy. Let's move on to extension question seven. So you've got A to B equals to nine to four and 10 B equals to seven C. Work out A to C in its simplest form. Okay. Um, so let's rearrange this. Oh, let's get B to C on its own. So if we've got 10B equal to 7C, <clears throat> yeah, so we want it um, we want it to look like um, B over C. So we need that to go there, and that's going to go there, yeah. So you're going to get B over C equals uh 7 over 10 so your ratio for b to c will be 7 to 10 yeah that's your first ratio in fact that's your second ratio because they've they've given you the first one already so now your new ratio a to b to c uh well a, a to b was 9 to 4 let's write that down b to c that's your new one that's 7 to 10 okay um yeah b is common in both so uh let's change that to 28 yeah it's a common factor mm, so you're gonna have to times this row by seven this row by four uh so nine sevens are uh 63 that goes there and that's gonna be uh 40 here yeah, and now uh, we just need A to C. So our new in our new ratio, A 
is 63, C is 40, and it's asking us to simplify it as well, don't forget. Uh, what goes into these? Does anything go into these? Let's double check. No, that's it. Yeah, you can check with the calculator if you wish. I just typed in 63 divided by 40. It just stays the same, 63 over 40. So there's your final answer, 63 over 40. Yep. <clears throat> Extension question eight. A bag contains only red counters and yellow counters in the ratio of three to four. If seven of the red counters are removed from the bag, the ratio of red counts to yellow counts is two to three. How many yellow counts are in the bag? Okay. Oh, bit of a tricky question, this. Bag contains only red counts and yellow counts in the ratio of three to four. So this ratio here, the three to four, that's red to yellow. But obviously that doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be three red or four yellow in there. You know, it's just a ratio at the end of the day. It's just simplified um version of however many red counts and yellow counts is going to be so just bear that in mind for this question so later on they said uh, if seven of the red counts are removed from the bag the ratio of the red counts to yellow is two to three so that is our real ratio when they start moving counts about and stuff like that so how many yellow counts are in the bag? okay so what I would do, um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Do you know, like I said, that, that this ratio doesn't necessarily mean how many counters there are. It's going to be multiplying something. Yeah, so it's going to be like um, there's going to be a multiplier to both of these. Whatever that multiplier is, we don't know. So let's call it um, let's call it three x yeah and you've multiplied this by the same amount yeah so the x is our multiplier so basically it's going to multiply both sides by something which we don't know um and uh and and we can uh we'll, we'll have the exact number of red counts and blue counts that we're supposed to have sorry red counts and yellow counts um so let's call that multiply x okay so three times something to four times something, which we don't know, okay? If seven of the red counters are removed, so seven red counters are removed, so you've technically got three X minus seven. Yep, you've still got four X on that side, okay? And they're saying that is now equal to the ratio two to three, yep because that's our new ratio of red to yellow. Okay, so this must equal this, definitely. So our, um, let's put this as a fraction. So three X minus seven over four X equals two over three. Yeah, that's the same as that, isn't it? Yeah, using that same logic that, um, uh, you remember before when we did it as as a, as a fraction? That's the same as that. Okay, let's rearrange this. Let's get x on its own. So let's bring that up there. Let's bring that up there. So we'll get uh, three three x minus seven equals two lots of four x. Okay, I'm gonna carry on up here. Uh, so let's get rid of the brackets. 9x minus 21 equals 8x. Um, let's switch these around. Let's minus 8x here and here. And let's add 21 here and here. So I'll get 1x equals 21. Ooh, okay. So if 1x is 21, what's it asking for? How many yellow counts are in the bag? Oh, well, there were 4x, not 4, but 4x. So if x is 21, 4x is going to be 4 times that, which is 
84. Yeah, that's your answer. It's a really good way of doing it. Oh, what's happened there? Counters. There you go. Um, that's a really good way of doing it. Um, there is another way. You know, you could just say, let me do it in a different color. Um, you could have said, well, if the ratio of red to yellow is three to four, um, eventually, you know, you will get a ratio of two to three as well. Uh, so we had two to three. Well, the only one that's they said that gets affected is the red. Yeah, the yellow stays the same. So let's change the yellow. Uh, the yellow is the, the, the common factor here. So the uh, biggest, uh, so the lowest common factor for, for yellow is 12. So if you multiply this by 4, multiply this side by 3, let's see what we get. Um, so you'll get... Um, so for the original one, so the original three times three gives you nine to 12. But if you do it for the second one, you'll get eight to 12. So the difference between the red is one part. Yeah, you know, when, when the change happened, the change was that seven counters were removed from the bag. Yeah, so those seven counters changed uh, from technically from nine parts to eight parts. So that change, that, that difference of one part, that one part is equal to the seven. Oh, what's happened to my screen? Just give it a few seconds. <laughs> Come on. There we go. One part equals seven counters. Okay. Um, so if one part equals seven counters, uh, what's it asking for? Oh, yeah, there's your, there's your crucial bit, finding out what one part is. Yeah. Um, and uh, what was he asking for? How many yellow counts? Well, the yellow represents 12. So if you do 12 times 7, you'll get the number of yellow counts. 12 times 7, which is 84. You get the same answer. Yeah. So there's your answer. Whichever way you do it, it's absolutely fine. Me personally. I like this way with the uh, algebra. It just makes more sense as well. Doesn't matter which way you do it, you'll get the same answer. Let's move on. We're almost done. Uh, just two more questions to go. Extension question nine. Uh, B is two thirds of C. 4A equals 5C. Uh, work out the ratio of A to B to C. Give your answer in its simplest form. Okay, so let's write what they're talking about. B is equal to two thirds of c that's literally your equation yeah um let's rearrange it let's bring that up there so we got 3b equals 2c okay and let's bring the c down here the three goes down here yeah so you'll get b over c equals two over three so your ratio of B to C is two to three. Okay, um, let's do the same for that other one. So we've got four A equal to five C. You want A and C on its own. So let's bring C over here. Let's bring that four over here. So you'll get A over C equals five over four. So A to C is five to four. Let's write a ratio A 
to B to C. It's very similar to the questions that we've done, isn't it? Um, so A to C is five to four. Okay. B to C is two to three. There you go. There's your common ratio. The C is common in both. Make that equal to 12. You're going to have to times that by four times this row by three. Um, that's going to be eight. That's going to be 15. Yep. So your ratio is 15 to eight to 12. Um, we can't simplify any more. That's your answer. Yep. 15 to eight to 12. Let me save it before it crashes. <laughs> yep. It looks like it's about to crash because I've done so much writing on here. Give it a few seconds and I'll do the last one. Okay. Uh, last question. Uh, extension question 10. Uh, if 4x equals half y, circle the ratio x to y. Well, let's see what they're talking about. 4x equals half y. Um, so I don't like that half. Make it into a whole number. You're going to have to double it into a whole number. So you're going to have to double this side as well. What do you get? 8x equals 1y. Um, yep, bring that to that side. In fact, I'll put a 1 there as well. Bring that to that side. you'll get x over y is 1 over 8. Yep, so the ratio is going to be from x to y, that's going to be 1 to 8, so it's that one. Um, part B says 7c plus 2d equals 2c plus 9d. Find the ratio c to d. Okay, so we're going to have to rearrange this. Let's get... Oh, I'll tell you what, let's take away two C's to both sides. And let's take away two D's here. So we'll get five C equals seven D. <clears throat> yep, that's better. And now, if you want your ratio to be C over D. You're going to have to bring that over there. Bring that 5 down there. You'll get C over D equals 7 over 5. There's your answer. C to D is 7 to 5. Yeah, it's easy when you know how, isn't it? <laughs> so uh that's all of the uh, ratio type of questions they're pretty much the same they always ask you the same pretty much same thing um if you're not sure just obviously go through all these these different types of ratio questions it will definitely come up you know i don't know which ones are going to come up obviously but they will definitely come up um roughly about a quarter of your paper will be to do with ratio that's what we tend to find so it does come up quite a lot yeah, whether that's in the non-calculator or, or in the calculate papers makes no difference. Do practice, have a look on Maths Watch and try and practice as many of these as you can. You definitely need to know how to do ratios, especially these harder ones, you know, these equations. Um, they're most likely to come up in the higher papers. Yep. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I shall record a different video very soon. See you guys later.